It is really such a novelty to sit through 3,000 submissions and like find things like this. This is knitted paint. That's knit insane. Paint. <laughs> the technicians opened up the doors and we literally gasped. It, There's yeah. something about this is so YouTube to me. Every time I see it, it makes me feel a bit giddy. <laughs> Do you know what it does? It humiliates me. And I yeah. love that. My name is Gabrielle. I'm Zarina. And we were lucky enough to be jurors on this year's panel. We are here at the 32nd edition of the John Moore's Painting Prize here in the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool. We're gonna go have a look at some paintings. Do you wanna come? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So this is The Golden Hour by Francisco Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. It's so big and like the diagonals make you just want to walk straight into it. You feel like you could almost fall into the, the, the picture, like it's a, a trick or something. Yeah. It's funny as well, when we were in the judging process because it was completely anonymous, mm. we all had hunches that this was an Italian painter because it was like quite the Chirico references with the mm. diagonals and the colors. But this guy's from Chile. <laughs> When we were judging, I spent a lot of my time wondering about what the images within the images mean. I was also really obsessed with like the fact that he had painted graph paper and oh, yeah. masking tape and yeah. it, it, you know, it doesn't need to be painted, it doesn't need to be stuck on, but it just mm. works so well with the flatness of the entire thing. God. It's great. We love this. Yeah. <laughs> See, I think if we, we're going to take hours to go around the show because every time we have a like, stop yeah. and have a look, we're just like, and I love this. Isn't it great? We're so good at picking paints. <laughs> well done, us. <laughs> it's so nice to like be reacquainted with all the paintings that we spent so long thinking about. <laughs> yeah. And the space as well, I think, because we weren't we in this room. We were judging? judging in this room, yeah. yeah. Purgatorial. It was it was an intense day. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Angela Lison's horseman. And it is tiny. It's so small. For That's reference. how small it is for tiny. reference. <laughs> And there's something about a small painting that like just format wise I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Handheld, like that scale, it pulls my face in and it addresses my face. But it works well for the treatment of the subject matter. Oh yes. Because right. what this painting is, is a reproduction of a naked Putin on a tiny porcelain horse. And the horse has got this kitschy little face, like yeah. this bric-a-brac. I keep using the word kitsch without qualifying it. It describes things that run counter to, um, to high final taste. Yeah. yeah. But like Putin seated on this kitsch horse, this kitsch ceramic horse, not only is he made small, but like the idea of kitsch and like that um, shit, like bad taste is like blown up large and monumentalized in turn to meet him. Like they both meet in the middle, Putin down and kitsch up. It's really clever. I love this. I'd buy this if someone hadn't put a deposit down and if it had <laughs> thousands of pounds, I'd have this in my house. Are you excited for the next room? I am. I think I find the curation and like the layout really pleasing. Do you? I do. I wonder, do. wonder you did that. Who's up for me? <laughs> Gabrielle, you did it. You and Alexis. This is Web Zeal by Derek Harris, which just so happens to be one of the best paintings ever. <laughs> you were really into this one. We shouldn't have favourites, but... We shouldn't have favourites, but like that's the nature of a jury. That's the nature of taste as well. It's the nature yeah. of taste, I can't yeah. help it. Early on in the like juror process, we could only see like images of these paintings on screens, but when it came in yeah. to, the, to the gallery and we got to see it in person, yeah. it felt like <gasps> like, a, like a moment. I got to see like some of the details that maybe didn't translate to digital reproduction. So yeah. you can see the kind of slight pixelation of the fingers and the graininess, the there, grain, the weird. chalkiness of like yeah. the finish, the letterboxing on the sides and that like really thin line the along really, the bottom. Yeah. I was like, this has got to be YouTube. It, There's yeah. something about this is so YouTube to me. I kind of enjoy that this is a screen yeah. and enormous. It's huge. Because there's something about scale that I find very novel. Mm. Like, I'm so used to screens being like tiny little, tiny things, little handheld yeah. things or like laptop sized things. And like, that's small, it's small, that's enormous. Like, you can. It feels like something to like honor. I don't know. Like, here's a big thing that you can come and like pay tribute to. That's beautiful. And so all weird. of that together just oh. felt like it resulted in a painting that was worthy of being in the John Wood Painting Prize. <laughs> and also, again, in my house if I could afford it. <laughs> that's, 
I think a really good yardstick for judging, like, mm. would you be able to live with this painting <laughs> in your house? No, completely seriously. <laughs> like, could you spend time with this day to day? Chronic. Yeah, like, I could. It has to be in. The next one is just there. So it is Hell by Emma Rush. And I love it. As an avid knitter, yeah. this appeals to parts of your very soul. <laughs> <laughs> this is knitted paint. Like, I've never even heard of it someone would never doing occur that. to me. That's to knit insane. Paint. <laughs> the amount of time this must have taken. It takes long to knit anything. But also, what she has had to do is figure out the best type of paint. Mm. She lays it in like long lines, lets it dry, makes thread of it, mm. knits with it. I would break it straight away. It would go. Imagine so she must, have, she must have to use something with like enough elasticity to like handle the process. I'm really interested in like the more I look at things, am I rewarded by spending that time with it? Exactly. Because with this I am. Should we go from fun, levity to maybe the most intense part of the exhibition. Yeah. The most confrontational. It's a real vibe shift. Huge vibe door. shift. You turn this corner and it's just there. Yeah, arresting. So this is Nicholas Baldian's altarpiece, Social Murder, Grenfell in three parts. In the jury process, this came to us with closed doors, which has um, the Grenfell symbol on the outside with the green heart and mm. it's annotated by people who've like done workshops with the artist. And it was wheeled in and we were like, oh, what's this? And then the technicians opened up the doors and we literally gasped. It was like a gut punch. Yeah. It was so intense. Besides the political, there's something art historically really interesting going on with this painting. It is in the format of like an altarpiece, like a triptych. It's that um, that fold out moment that like a lot of ye olde artists <laughs> went in for back in the day when the church was like your main patron who'd commission all of these paintings. In the past, you would see saints and gods and people that you were supposed to revere. Mm. And now those people have been replaced with politicians and we're supposed to have faith in those people. Yeah. And when things like this happen, it shows that that system doesn't work and it doesn't need to be there. And we maybe shouldn't have faith in it because actually it just does so much violence to people. Yeah. Every time I see it, it makes me want to like be quiet in front of it. It's, it's yeah. like re-traumatizing. And actually during the curation process, there were questions of like, where should we put this to be sensitive to mm -hmm. the public? It made sense when we were curating to put Grenfell next to Rishi. Uh, it just felt like two parts of one sentence or something. So this is British Values by Emma Price. This is funnier. This, yeah. this, is, this has got like a comedic edge that I find really compelling. One thing we were really drawn to was the way that he is pictorially beheaded, like straight across the eyes, the framing, he's cut off. Yeah. And like, the, the lady behind the counter is not. She looks great. She's smiling. She looks like great. She looks she's, relaxed. Yeah, she looks she's great. leaning in. That's she's what she like, she does easy. every day. She greets customers. Mm -hmm. And then the way Emma has cropped and framed yeah. Rishi is is in an attempt to embarrass him. <laughs> yeah. He's tense. Like it, it's it's he's clenched at the counter. Like the, it's not just it's not just the framing, it's embarrassing for him like posturally. Yeah. Like it's I so know. good. I love it. Next one's a bit of a vibe shift. But yeah. That's like the political corner. We've had the conversation, we've yeah. had terrible we've, feelings inside us. We've thought about our place in the world. Now, time for some. Surrealism. <laughs> 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 Amy Steele's, because I know so little, I grow for more. <laughs> I don't know if this is just because you've got us showing you around and we are specific people with specific tastes, but Mm -hmm. I feel like well, when we were judging, like an infant tyrant king, yeah. we were looking to be delighted oh, yeah, yeah, by yeah. the images that were... You looked tense all, uh, yeah, through, I <laughs> all through that sentence, like you didn't know where I was going with it. But like, I just wanted to be surprised and delighted. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I wanted to find images that like I found compelling, but also delightful. Because I mean, we see so many images every day. You see like a thousand images on your phone before you get out of bed. And they're all horrible. <laughs> they're all terrible. All of them. 
It is really such a novelty to sift through 3,000 submissions of paintings to the John Moore's Painting Prize and like find things like this. Yeah. Every time I see it, it makes me feel a bit giddy. <laughs> I get that. I don't yeah. know whether to be excited or embarrassed or aroused by what I'm seeing. And maybe it's all free. Maybe I'm like, <laughs> but it's just, it does something to me. I hope it's like not quite the type of painting people would expect to see here. Because maybe, you know, we're in a museum. This is a historical prize. They want to see serious, rigorous, academic output. Not that this isn't, no. but it stretches the idea of like what people think is serious painting. Yeah. And I love what, that. Yeah, what could be serious painting? Because I think this is serious. This is like, to yeah. like the range of technical abilities that are on display just within this one image, I think is really astounding because it's like, it's a masterful <laughs> use of the medium itself. Like this is someone who's competent with paint. Oh, I'm giddy every oh. time. I love it. <laughs> it's my favorite one. I say this every time. It is your favorite one. <laughs> Do you see the winner? I do. I love the winner. I sort of love that every time I see a picture of it, mm. it looks like a different colour. Yeah. So it's you different. have to go and see it in real life. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't count. You d yeah. <laughs> no, you've not seen the real thing. You've seen a facsimile. Yes. A proximal version. Of Graham Crowley's light industry. What Graham does really well is he makes a painting, but he also makes an image. Like there's a way to view it in the same way that like you view an impressionist work, mm -hmm. where like you can kind of like, you know, zone out a bit and appreciate what this person is doing and manipulating paint and color. I know that he does a wash of color, but then he also paints into it while it's still wet mm -hmm. so that he can manipulate it. That's what a imagine. painting prize mm -hmm. should do. Like it should yeah. find people who, who really know how to use paint and yeah, who are one with the paint. material because like to, yeah. to make an image and a painting in this way so quickly wet on wet would require such familiarity and competency with the me the, me the medium itself and like the material and also like, a, bit, a bit of speed yes yeah. like, you know there's a, there's a time pressure in working that way and yeah. and you can feel the energy but also like that energy doesn't feel you know, like it's working Frantic. against the artist. It yeah. feels like it, it kind of works to the subject matter of like, oh, this is a workshop. This is where like energetic, creative things happen. Mm. And that flex in, is like clearly in a painter who is so experienced as to have been shortlisted for this prize three times already, which is something we didn't know. He was even a juror once, like we are. It's so cool. And um, yeah. It's a good story, isn't it? It's a really good story. I'm glad he, I'm glad he got it in the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me which one's your favourite. I will show you my favourites. <laughs>